Hello and welcome to the sewing studio. Today I'm going to show you how to make a quilted bag and you can make this as big as you want or as small as you want and you can make it out of a quilt top that you're really not happy with. So I'm going to show you the bag. This is quite a small one. So it's a quilted bag. I should just pop it on to give you a demonstration. And it's got a pocket. This one's big enough to pop an iPad in. It's also got a pocket at the front, a pocket at the back, and I've put a shoulder strap on it. So I'm going to show you how to make this. And what you need is a quilted square. So you, as I said earlier, you can make it any size you want, but it has to be a square. So I'm just going to show you another small one. So I've got a small square here that has been quilted and it's got the binding on. And as long as it's exactly square, then you can make a bag. The bag ends up about a third of the size of your square. So I'm going to take a quilt that I really wasn't happy with. I did an experiment where I was trying to compare a honey bun to a charm square quilt and I wasn't happy with either. It didn't really work out. So rather than waste this, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut a square of it off. So as I say, as long as it's a square, that's all that matters. So to make this into a square, I'm just going to line it up, taking that corner, taking that to there, and that's my square. So with my scissors, I'm going to cut across it, and then I'm going to put it onto some binding with the backing. So this is going to make a bigger quilt. Nothing's wasted because I might even use this bit that I've cut off as the handle. So I'm not wasting anything. So we'll hold this for a moment. So I've now got this square. So I've taken my version of this, which is the charm squares. I've put some lovely bright backing on it and I've got wadding in between and I've done some quilting. So I'm going to go over to the machine and show you some of this quilting. And the other great thing with this bag is your quilting doesn't have to be perfect or neat because you're not going to see very much of it. It can be as random as you want. It's a fantastic opportunity to practice your free motion quilting. Or I'm just going to do these wavy lines, which is quite freeing because you can just go any which way. I'm going to do some in orange and I'm going to do some in green. So we're now going to go over to the sewing machine to do some quilting. So I've got my walking foot on and I've got some orange thread in the top and orange thread in my bobbin. And when I come to do my green quilting, I'll leave the orange in the bobbin and I'll just put some green on the top. I'm just going to show you how to do some wavy line quilting. So it's, I've got it on the straight stitch and I'm literally just going to take it through the machine and let the machine do the work and just make it as wiggly as I want it to be. And the beauty of this is not to get too hung up about your quilting. It's a great opportunity, as I said earlier, for practicing. going to do that again just to show you again it can be as wavy or as random as you want just try and show you under this camera a minute some of the lines that I've already done so you can see here some of the wavy lines that I've done and then I'm going to do some more in green and I'm probably going to come down that way as well so I'm just going to do another wavy line to just show you how easy it is to do
So I would do that until I'd done all of the quilting. Then I would trim it up and I'd put my binding on. And probably in this case, I might have used some of the scrappy binding that I've cut off the other quilt that we did earlier, or I might do some green, I haven't decided yet. But I'm gonna show you now how we put all this together to make the bag. So we've got our square that's been quilted and it's got the binding on, and this is how you form the bag. So you decide which you want on the outside of your bag. So in this case, if I wanted this lovely cream and lilac color on the outside, that goes on the inside for now. And you go diagonally, corner to corner. So you've got this triangle shape. So you measure all the way from here to here, and you divide that by three. So if this was 21 inches, each of these you would measure in seven. But if it was 21 and a half, you would have to come seven and a little bit. So it has to be exactly into thirds for it to work. So I've got one here that I've done that with already. And just before I do that, I'll show you roughly the size that this bag's going to end up. So this is going to end up as quite a small bag. Now, the square measured, let me just measure the square to give you an idea. So this square measured 19 inches. And so the bag, if we fold it into three, as our finished bag's going to be, so that bag is just over nine inches finished. So that just gives you an idea what you're working to. And I'll show you the bigger one in a moment. So here is one that I have folded corner to corner. I have measured in a third and I've already sewn. And I have sewn up there with my walking foot right the way up. So maybe on the camera above we can see, so that's this one's the quilting line, but this one here is where I have stitched the bag together so that it's stitched like that. You can see it's stitched there. And then what you do is you put your hand inside and then you take, put your hand right up to that corner where you've just sewn and then you take this and you pull it round like this. So you can see the fabric that was on the inside of the bag is now on the outside. I'm going to put my finger right up in that corner and I'm going to pull that over there like that and it's turned through to make the bag. I'll give it a good press and then I will also just hand stitch down here to keep that closed. You could put a button and a popper on it so you've got an extra pocket but that is basically how you make it. Again, just a little hand slip stitch down there so you've got that pocket. As I say, buttons, poppers, whatever you want to do to decorate it to make it your own. And then you put your handles on. And hey presto, you've got yourself a quilted bag. So I'm just going to show you roughly the size that this orange quilt's going to end up. So Bearing in mind this was, let's just measure it for you. So this one measures exactly 28 inches square. So this is a bigger piece. Once this is, I've finished quilting this and I've got my binding on, it will go corner to corner like this. I will measure across here I'll do my two rows of sewing up there and the bag will end up approximately that sort of size. And you can see, so I'll have this on the outside once I've done the sewing and I've pulled it through. But I'm just trying to give you an idea now of the kind of size that quilt ends up, that kind of size bag, which is... 14 inches across. 
So it's about half the size, whatever your square starts out at, it comes down to about half the size as a finished bag. And I just think they're great presents. I think they're really good fun. And I think it's a great way of using quilts that you're not happy with. So as always, have fun. And I look forward to seeing you next time here in the sewing studio. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. There's a button just to my left. If you've got any questions, we're happy to answer those in the comments below. And for all your patchwork and quilting needs, head on over to the sewing studio. We have an amazing array of patchwork and quilting products and all of the relevant links are in the description below. Look forward to seeing you next time.